All right, so it is your boy, Vani Hudson from FixedByVani.com. And today we're going to talk about the dreaded, the infamous trust relationship. No, I'm not talking about the relationship that you just got out of because your girlfriend dumped you. I'm talking about that blasted error that every IT professional, every network administrator, and some end users have experienced. Today we're going to fix it. I'm going to show you the wrong way, and then I'm going to show you the right way. In fact, I'm going to show you two right ways to do it, and then a third bonus trick that you can do if the two right ways don't work. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's talk about this error that everybody's seen. Um, it is, it's a pain, um, and this is what it looks like. It says there are currently no login servers available to service the login request. No, it's so annoying. There are no login servers available. So what do you do? What do you do when you get this error message? Well, most people, I'd say most people try to do a couple of things. And it's not really effective in the long term to do these things. The first thing is to try to impulsively unjoin and rejoin the machine to the domain. If you're a network administrator, you get this error message. And the first thing you want to do is go into your computer system properties, right click, you know, go in there, then you want to you know, join the computer to a work group, and then you probably reboot, and then you log back in, and then you join it to a domain, and then you reboot, and uh, then you're good. But this takes two reboots. It's really annoying, and it doesn't, it's not really the most effective use of your time. So that's not the way to do it. I'm going to show you a better way. Another option, another thing that I've seen people do and that I used to do myself, is to unplug the Ethernet cable. The logic there is that if you disconnect it from the domain controller, then it won't try to authenticate against it. And then you can just log in using cache credi cached credentials. Um, or you can try to log in with a local user account and get in that way. But even this really isn't an ideal um, option because you're, you're unplugging the Ethernet cable you're disconnected from the network. It's not very elegant. So uh, let me show you the right way to do this. Okay, so the right way to do it is to use a, a program called NL Test. Now, NL Test actually comes um, by default in uh, Windows. It's a great tool. You can use it. You don't even need to reboot the computer. You use it on the client side. Second option is to embrace PowerShell. And there's a commandlet called Test Computer Secure Channel which I really love because this guy really will um, help you get the job done. It's very fast. Again, you don't need to reboot. If neither NL test or the test computer secure channel commandlets work, then you have another option. It's not as elegant, but you can actually log into Active Directory and right click the computer and choose reset. Then, and only then, should you um, unjoin it and rejoin to the domain. The idea there is that you're actually resetting the secure channel between the client and the server. The thing is, every 30 days, by default, a Windows computer uses its computer account. That's right, computers have accounts. It uses the computer account to um, check in with the domain controller. And if the computer has been off for older, over 30 days or the uh, passwords went, are, are no longer in sync for some reason, you'll be required to um, restore that security association, that secure channel. Um, and the way to do that, obviously, is to reset the account. Okay, so I'm going to show you all these things right now. Check it out. All right, so here we are at the login screen, and let's see if we can get into this box. Go ahead and enter my domain credentials. As you can see, it says sign into fixed by Vani, which is my domain. In your case, it might say something else. But when I type in my password, there we get the error message. There are currently no login servers available to service the login request. Which, by the way, I think they used the word login a little too much there. But that's what we get. Now, the way to get around this is to log into the local machine. So instead of saying sign into fixed by Vani or sign into your domain, whatever that is, it should say sign into and the host name of your machine. The way we do that is we change the username field. 
we put a dot and a backslash. The backslash is usually above the enter key, below the backspace key. And then we put in our local account that has administrative rights. And we enter the password for that account. And now we're logged into the local administrator. And the first thing that I'd like to do, well, let me show you what we used to do. So in the past, we would go to the system, go to change settings, and then we would click change. And in here, you would join a random work group, blah, 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 whatever. Click OK. It joins the work group and it asks you to restart. You would restart, that's one reboot. When you log back in, you would then enter the domain. You type in the domain here. You click OK. It would ask you to reboot. You reboot a second time, then you log into the domain and the what's called the uh, secure channel will be reestablished. We're not gonna do that. There's too many reboots and it takes forever to do that. There's a smarter way to do it. Instead, we're gonna open up a command prompt. Windows key X A is a shortcut. Or you can just load the command prompt by typing the Windows icon and just typing CMD. Either way works. The bottom line is we just want to load a command prompt with administrative privileges. So Windows key XA will get us there. And in here, we're going to use NL test. Now, I'm not just going to give you the NL test command because that wouldn't really serve you well. I want you to see how this works so that you can use it on your use it, um, without just memorizing a command, but understanding what the command does. So we're going to type NL test forward slash question mark. I know there's a lot of text. Let's go ahead and scroll up. I'll walk you through it. So what we're going to do is we're going to type NL test space and then options. Notice that this is in brackets because it's optional. Um, but it's not optional in our case because we're going to use the server switch followed by a colon and then the server name. Now here's the kicker. The server name is not the name of the domain controller. It's actually the name of your client machine. And this is what trips up a lot of people. You're going to put the host name of your machine. Now you can find the host name by typing set and then looking at the computer name field or you can just simply type host name and you'll get the host name that way but I like a better option it's just using the percent host name percent variable which is a variable that represents your host name and you're gonna see how I'm going to use that in a moment so let's go back to NL test and let's scroll up so we're going to use NL test space forward slash server colon percent host name percent space and now we need to tell it what to do if you look down on this list you'll see a bunch of different options but the one we care about is the forward slash sc underscore reset colon domain name backslash dc name i know that's a mouthful but this will actually re reset the secure channel for that given domain for the domain controller so you're going to put in the fully qualified name of your domain followed by a backslash and then the host name of your domain controller. Let me show you what that looks like. So we'll type NL test server. I'll use percent host name. And then SC reset. By the way, if you see forward slash SC underscore repair, it does the same thing. I think that's what it's it's called on Windows 7 or older versions of Windows. And then here you'll put in the domain followed by a backslash and the host name of your domain controller and you should get some information back now here you can see it says server unavailable <laughs> that's because I turned off my domain controller in order to um, do this demonstration that's the way I broke the secure channel but um, in your case you should actually see that it uh, doesn't give you a failed message and it should reset it then you can actually log out of the machine um, I think it's log off and uh, then log back in the domain now let me show you one other option let's go back to our local machine a local user and instead of using NL test we're going to use PowerShell so quick way to do that is the Windows key type power 
shell and we can load this as an administrator. Now in PowerShell, we've got a very cool commandlet called test computer secure channel. But before I run that, I want to show you exactly what this thing does. So if we type git dash help, or if we just type help, either one works. And then we type test computer I just press tab to tab complete it secure channel and we type full it'll give us the full help if we type show window it'll show a little window on the side if we type examples it'll show us examples on how to use uh, the different options so let me show you what this does first let's type full you can see that this takes a, per a repair parameter which is in brackets Everything in brackets is optional. So credentials, what if, we'll show you what would, what would have happened if you ran the command. These are all optional. That's what these brackets mean. Um, and if you scroll down a little bit, I'm gonna press the space bar, you'll see uh, these different parameters. It tells you if it's required. You can see it's false for all of them because they were in brackets. And uh, that's what you get there. Now if we go back up and we type show window, we get a nice little window. So now we can move the secure channel to the side and um, kind of scroll and look at the help while we're still able to type in the command window. So I like this little option. And finally, if you use the examples, I'll just show you some examples, but you notice it says, get help cannot find the help files for this command on this computer. It is displaying only partial. Yeah, so we actually need to download the uh, help files. Um, by default, PowerShell does not do that. And it's telling you what you can do. It's saying you can use git help test dash computer secure channel space dash online. So let's do that. Um, it looks like it's going out to Microsoft's website, which I actually, well, you know what? That's fine. We could do it that way. Oh, all these error messages. So see, it says repair, removes, and then rebuilds the secure channel established by the net login service. Use this parameter to try to restore a connection that has failed the test. So this is what we're going to do. I just wanted to show you, you know, how you can get here and, and kind of the, the logic behind it and um, you know, how it works. And here are the examples I was, I, was, I was talking about. I think in order to get the help files, you have to type git help. I think it's git update. Is that it? I can't remember the command. Um, oh, it's update help, I think. I think it's just update help. Yeah, that was it. So this update help command will basically go down and download all the help files. Now, the reason PowerShell doesn't ship with help files is because there's so many changes that that happen in PowerShell that the the help files would be outdated and nobody wants to just spend forever going to Windows Update downloading PowerShell updates. So um, the first time you run PowerShell, you should always do an update help. It'll just pull down all the uh, relevant uh, modules, and then you'll have everything you need to run the full switch after the, the commandlet. That gives you the full help. It actually gives you what you see here. But instead of on this web page, it'll give it to you in the PowerShell window. So we're gonna let this finish, and then I'll show you what to do. All right, so we're back. Now if we go back to that command and we type full, you notice now we have the examples. Before we didn't have the examples, and it's showing you here you can use test-computer-secure-channel-repair to reset the, the uh, channel between the local computer and its domain. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. And just to show you that it really works with the, uh, the help downloading, we can change this to examples and it shows us only the examples. So this is a very cool trick that you can use for PowerShell. Remember, the uh, dash full gives you the full help, dash uh, show window gives you the small window on the side, and dash examples shows you examples. This, this applies to all the commandlets, not just the, the test uh, computer secure channel commandlet. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. What's the point, right? Oh, that's because I had help in the front. 
And it doesn't understand that. And there you go. And it's saying that it can't reset it in my case because remember I had to turn off my domain controller for this demonstration. But in a real live situation, um, you wouldn't get this error message. It would just repair it and you'd be fine. Um, and there you go. Now, one more thing I just wanted to look at. I think there is a verbose option. Is there? No, there's not. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. Okay. So that's all I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching. Um, go ahead and like this video. Thumb it up. Thumb it down. I really don't care what you d what you thumb it. Just interact with it in some way and let me know what you're thinking. If you think it sucks, tell me why. If you think it's great, that's cool. Uh, you know, I love compliments. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Click that sus subscribe button and go to my website at fixedbyvani.com and you can get more content like this. And um, if you join my mo if you join my uh, mailing list, I'll also give you a free ebook on uh, getting the most out of Google Chrome. So that's a nice little bonus I'll throw in there for you. All right, thanks.